So uh, we go on with Dr. Hans Raj once again. Good evening, everyone. So I'll be presenting our results of the real-world outcomes of intravitreal borolizumab for persistent diabetic macular edema. So at the outset, I'll declare that we have no financial conflicts of interest or any uh, interest with this presentation. So over the past two decades, anti-VEGFs have become the primary mode of treatment for center-evolving diabetic macular edema. But there's a significant chunk of patients in which complete resolution of fluid does not take place despite persistent intense therapy. These patients may be labeled as persistent DME, recalcitrant DME, res resistant DME. There's no clear-cut definition as per the number of injections or the treatment regimen to define such a patient, however. Recently, in 2022, the FDA has approved brolicizumab uh, on the basis of the Kestrel Kite studies to treat diabetic macular edema. And since more molecules can be packed in the same amount of volume, we have decided we wanted to investigate its effect on persistent diabetic macular edema. The primary outcome was to see the effect on visual acuity and central retinal thickness and secondarily to see any incidences of any adverse effects, primarily intraocular inflammation. It was a prospective interventional trial of consecutive patients of persistent center involving diabetic macular edema at a single center, tertiary care center in South India, conducted between January 2022 to August 2023. Center involving di uh, persistent diabetic uh, macular edema as per our study was defined as any edema persisting despite three consecutive monthly injections of the same agent or any combination of agents, intravitreal steroids, or different anti-VEGF agents. We excluded any patient which had macular pathology in which the visual acuity would be affected by that coexisting pathology, or any patient who had had any prior episodes of non-infectious intraocular inflammation. Patients were treated on a pro-renata basis. At every visit, the visual acuity was checked by the Snellens acuity chart. A comprehensive ocular examination was conducted, and OCT was taken by either by spectral or swept source modalities. The systemic status, it was ensured that the systemic status was well maintained and blood sugar levels were well controlled for all patients. At, at every visit, patients were also uh, meticulously checked for any signs of intraocular inflammation. They were also kept under close follow-up via teleconsultation. If the eye was to be injected, it was always checked prior to injection. So what we found that we included 13 patients with 19 eyes. Of these 19 eyes, 13 eyes would have proliferated diabetic retinopathy. The mean age of presentation of patients was 64.4 years, and it was uh, uh, well distributed amongst males and females and unilateral bilateral eyes. The other coexisting um, comorbidities also noted by us were presence of hypertension, diabetic nephropathy, dyslipidemia, anemia, and four patients were on insulin therapy. So while starting therapy, the, mean vis the median visual acuity of each pa of the patients were 20 by 50 on the saline acuity chart. And of the 19 eyes, 18 had received prior intravitreal anti-VEGF agents, while one patient had received four prior Ozodex injections. Six patients had also received a combination of intravitreal steroids, while four patients had received uh, diabetic uh, uh, laser photocoagulation for macular edema. So over the course of 20 months, a total of 63 injections were given, with a mean of 3.3 .3 injections per eye, with a mean re-injection interval of 11.1 .1 weeks. After the last follow-up of a median of 13 weeks after the last injection, it was noted that the visual acuity improved to a median of 20 by 44 on the Snellen acuity chart. There was a 54.1 reduction in the central retinal thickness over the course of the treatment, and there was a complete resolution of fluid on five of the 19 eyes. It was also noted that 52% reduction took place just after one injection, and which was also found to be statistically significant. So the uh, results were then analyzed by the Wilcoxon uh, sum rank test, and the change in visual acuity and the reduction in central retinal thickness was found to be significant. One patient had an episode of acute non-granulomatous iridocyclitis with spillover intermediate uveitis. This occurred after receiving her second injection. She was treated by intense topical corticosteroids, and uh, once the inflammation resolved, she was again treated with further three intravitreal borolicizumab injections. At the last follow-up, the complete resolution of edema was noted, and the visual acuity improved to 20 by 20 on the Snellen acuity chart. The strengths of our study are that it's a real-world study, which con con uh, contained all manner of patients, whether proliferative or non-proliferative -prol diabetic retinopathy, whether treated with anti vegs or steroids in the past. However, the sample size was small, the period of follow-up could be longer. Also, since it's a real-world out study, patients could not be followed in a very tight regimen, which may have reduced our effectiveness. To conclude, uh, intervitreal brolicizumab is effective and provides a ray of hope 
for persistent diabetic macular edema. And crucially, when the re mean re-injection interval of 11.1 .1 weeks, it may offer some ray of hope for such patients. Thank you. One question, Dr. Hansra. Uh, you said there was one can person, patient, who had intraocular inflammation, and after treating you again, started with bolusizumab only. So like this patient in particular had received four prior uh, Ozodex injections. She also had this one. It's, had, uh, it's a little difficult to explain to the patient, like he's already had an inflammation and the same. Uh, I thought it was a little, you could have changed. Uh, At the f actually, with our experience with, in not in the trial study and with other diseases, Pagenax actually has a much lesser incidence of inflammation as reported in landmark trials. So no, no, but if the patient has already had an inflammation and after treating you again, give the same injection again, uh, I would take it with a pinch of salt. Well, she I had don't know what others would have to say. All right, thank you. Thank Good you. presentation. Uh, any more questions? So.